Gigawatts. 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 No, 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 no. This sucker's electrical. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. What did I just say? The flux capacity stores. <laughs> this sucker's electrical. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Start this. I might as well. This is a never ending argument. I mean, nope. yeah. All right. Well, All right. I'm Joey Smoky. I'm Kevin Martin. And welcome to the Supplemental Instruction series of videos for Chemistry 121. And today we're going to be doing some examples with unit conversions. You guys have already seen the conceptual video where we again argued about gigawatts versus gigawatts. Yes. And if you have not seen that video, I would recommend you go back and watch that. It will be very helpful for doing these problems. Yes. All right. So, let's go ahead and dive right into them then. All right. So, we have convert 12.3 meters to centimeters. Hmm. So, Interesting. how would you recommend we start that? Well, we obviously have the 12.3 meters. We should start with that. That's right. Remember That's what from we're given. the other video, like I said, and like what Kevin said, we start with what we're given. And I like to put it over one, so we see immediately that I have 12.3 meters in the top, and I want to get rid of meters. Yes. Okay? For this... For, this, for the sake of this video, we're using the converting rate method. If you want the staircase, you can go back and write that down and then use that if you wish. Yeah. Okay. So, we're doing it this way. So we have meters on top. We want to cancel it, right? And remember that I like to always, don't worry about my numbers yet and just worry about the units. All right. So I want to get rid of meters on the top, so I just put them on the bottom. Okay. I want to get to centimeters, so I'm going to put those on the top. Okay. So now we know we have a ratio there, conversion mm -hmm. ratio. So now the question is, what is the conversion ratio? Like, how many centimeters go on one meter? Well, you can, you can either look this up, or but I happen to know what that is. Yes, and it's probably important that you guys know it too. All right. Yes. Now, one meter equals 100 centimeters, or you could represent it as one meter over 100 centimeters, or 100 centimeters over one meter. meter. Right. And in this case, what matches this one is that one. So we're going to put 100 centimeters up here to one meter down there. All right. Okay. And then we see that our meters cancel out, the unit we don't want, and we're left with the unit we do want on top, which is centimeters. So we're done. We just multiply and report our answer. All right. Okay. Which I think for this one is 1,230 centimeters. Very good. You can check your work on that. Yes. All right. So then we have this one here. All right. 467 milliliters to liters. All so right. again, we're given a number. We'll start with that and put it over one. Okay. 467 milliliters. It's a random Four. number. It is a random number. I had to make these up before we started, so while we were still busy arguing about, you know, gigawatts. Gigawatts. Let's focus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to get rid of milliliters, right? right. So where do the what do the milliliters go? Well, if we're trying to get rid of them, I would assume they go on the bottom. That's right. So we'll put milliliters down here. We want liters, so it stands to reason they go the only spot left, which is on top. Okay? So, now we got to worry about our numbers. What's our unit conversion here? All right, so we either have 1,000 milliliters over one liter, mm -hmm. or we have one liter over 1,000 milliliters. Exactly. Remember, you guys are going to want to be memorizing these things. Okay. Yes. So, the one that matches this one here is that one there. So, it's going to be one liter on the top and 1,000 milliliters on the bottom. Right. Like that. Our milliliters go away. We're left with liters, which is what we want in our answer. And so we just do the division. 467 divided by 1,000. Which, if you do that, you should get about 0.467 liters. Yes. Excellent. Okay. And finally, our last example. But this one's a little bit trickier. Yes, because we're not starting with the base unit at all. That's right. 
We're going straight from one prefix to another. That's right, from milligrams to kilograms. Now this is an example where the staircase, or the step ladder, I like to call it the step ladder, gigawatts, gigawatts. <laughs> would be a little bit helpful to you because remember you can kind of see how you go up the stairs, down the stairs. Even if you don't right. have the staircase, you don't have to despair. You just have to use two different conversion rates. That's right. So, well, again, we're going to start with what we're given. 500 milligrams. Put it over one. Right. Okay. Now, there is no direct conversion rate, as we mentioned, for milligrams to kilograms or vice versa. But what there is, is a conversion rate between milligrams and grams, and grams and kilograms. That's right. So we'll want to use those. Right. And again, if, if there's another way you could reason this out, since we know we want to cancel out milligrams, we can put that on the bottom. Then we ask ourselves the question, what can we relate milligrams to? And you should be able to immediately answer, like Kevin said, you can relate it to grams. So That's right. we can put that on top. Okay? We know we can relate those two for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what are our unit conversions for this one? Well, if I remember correctly, it's one gram over a thousand milligrams, or one thousand milligrams over one gram. It okay. looks a lot like the liter to milliliter exactly. conversion rate. There's a different base unit, the gram. Yep. Okay, so we see that the gram is on top, so we're going to be using this one here. All right. So we're going to put one gram there, and a thousand milligrams there. Okay, but remember, we're not done yet, because... Even though we got rid of the milligrams like this, we're left with grams. That's not what we want in our final answer. Kilograms. We want kilograms, exactly. So we're going to have to do this again. We're going to try and cancel out grams, so we're going to put that in the bottom. Then you ask yourself again, what can I relate grams to? Now, conveniently, you can relate grams to kilograms. All right. So we can put that on top. So there's one kilogram for a thousand grams, or one thousand gram for one kilogram. Exactly. Remember, memorize this stuff, it'll help you. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be using this one right here. That's, that's, that's the one that matches. So one kilogram there, a thousand grams there, and now we see that we get rid of the grams, and we're left with kilograms, which is the unit we want in our final answer. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! Alright, so... Can yeah. you do that out? That's... I'll get the calculator. That's about, let's see. I can do this. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go 500 divided by all that stuff. And we get 5 times 10 to the negative 4. Because really, that's a tiny number. Kilograms. Exactly. Or if you know, we want to convert it back into actual numbers, that's point zero 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 five. Oh. That, too many zeros. Too many zeros. I guess he wasn't here when we did the scientific notation videos. Yes, I'm very bad. Yeah. <laughs> so right. yes. Kilograms, don't forget your units. Remember that, don't forget your units. It's an easy way to lose two points on a test. That's right. Alright. Alright. There we go. That's how you do unit conversions. Yes, some practice problems. Exactly. Gigawatts. 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 Giga. 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 Giga.